Hello world, my name is Ashish and today's video is going to be about security best practices for AWS Certificate Manager, also known as ACMs. Um, before we go into the video, click on the bell icon and subscribe button so that you get updated when a new video is out and you can so you get notified of the new content as it gets released. All right, before we uh, jump in quickly, ACM is an AWS service which is used to provision, deploy and manage SSL or TLS certificates in AWS. Now in this video, I'm only doing definition and security best practices. However, if you want to know a bit more detail about what ACMs are, where would you want to use them, where would you not want to use them, what are the use cases, I've left a link in the description to my Medium article where I talk about all this. And also if you want a demo of how you use ACMs, uh, feel free to just leave a comment and I'll, I'll come back to the demo and make a video around it. All right, all right, let's start with the security best practices for AWS Certificate Manager. The first one, and this is probably relevant for irrespective of whether you use the service or not. If you use SSL or TLS certificates, just use the TLS certificates. Do not use SSL certificates just because they're not considered secure and they have been hacked for a while. Even with TLS, go for 1.1 or 1.2. Um, even though there was a hack recently found in TLS 1.3, you'll know with the link in the Medium article that is in the description, we would still recommend using TLS, which is a bit more secure way. Because we're talking about AWS security best practices, you may even ask yourself, why do you even need TLS or an SSL certificate? Why does it really matter? Now, you know that green lock that you see on a lot of websites when you visit, which establishes the trust that you are talking to the right website and it has not been hacked or it's not being used for someone else. That's the trust that these certificates build on your customers. Now, imagine if you are a bank or a, an institute that deals in credit card information and you want your customers to trust you enough so that you can have them doing transactions on your website, you need that green icon, which means you need SSL certificates. So it's always a good idea to have uh, HTTPS uh, communication, or it's always a good idea to have TLS enabled on all your public endpoints or public websites, because it establishes trust in the identity of your brand to your, to your customers and it also means that you're talking on an encrypted channel. The third thing I would recommend, ACMs allow you to import certificates, which are private certificates, which would have been uh, requested from your own CA. If you do decide to import certificates and not use the Amazon issued certificates in your ACMs, just make sure you use a strong key and a, a strong key size and a strong al cryptographic algorithm for the cryptography uh, used on those SSL or TLS certificates. And while we're on the topic of the use of certificate and what kind of versions you should have, what kind of certificate you should have, you probably want to make sure uh, that you're using ACM for the right reason. For example, if you use certificates in your uh, organization already, it's only a good practice. But if you don't use them that often, you will probably only have one website with a public endpoint. You don't really need a sophisticated uh, ACM, especially if that service is not even on AWS. You probably use ACMs if you have a service on the AC, on the AWS service or already, which brings me to the next point of if you have a public facing website hosted on AWS or anywhere and you're using a certificate on top of it, make sure the domain that you use is a fully qualified domain name, which is using the whole www.example.com instead of using star.example.com or anything else. Talking about star.example.com, wildcards, uh, only do not, okay, let me start with the not first. Do not use wildcard certificates for your production websites. You can use them for non-production websites just because you can, you would go through them very easily. So you can have different versions for being aware of which version you're currently running on, but do not use it for production. So that's probably another security best practice right there for wildcard certificates. Because ACMs only provide domain validated certificate, which is a good thing, which just goes back to the point of it would give you the green lock. It would also uh, make sure it, it establishes the identity of your domain. You do not want to use an ACM certificate for your production endpoint because it would come up as Amazon issued certificate instead of your domain issued certificate. So imagine going on www.ashishrajan.com and you see a certificate from Amazon instead of ashishrajan.com. Why would you trust that website? Because it has it is using a certificate of an entity you don't even know. So one more reason I recommend production websites should have a domain issued um, SSL certificate. Protect the private key. If you are in the realm of uh, using your own private keys in ACMs, or if you are importing your own SSL certificates into ACMs, make sure the private key is kept secure and make sure you, you regularly audit the use of ACM certificates in 
your environment to know what certificates have been issued if there are certificates in the AWS ACM which are not, no longer used or for an older domain that you used to own that you probably want to have a look at just removing those right in terms of scaling uh, you could look at scaling uh, best practices to have the use of tags uh, for making sure you can identify the group of users uh, who are owners or managing a certificate the group of owners who should have access to those certificates the group of owners who would be responsible for revocation as well. Uh, in terms of scaling, you can also, also use AWS CloudFormation to basically automate uh, the deployment of ACM uh, certificates across your AWS. Talking about revocation, um, fortunately, ACMs has a central revocation list which is maintained on an S3 bucket, which can be shared across all uh, your AWS accounts, which works in scale uh, scalability as well. Um, you just need to have a governance process around how you manage the revocation list and how you update those uh, I guess those revocation uh, lists across the board. Talking about processes and uh, governance, um, as if you have ACMs and if you have AWS ACMs uh, and you also have your own uh, certificate authority in your on-prem environment or somewhere else, you need to think of a way to blend that process into your existing certificate management process irrespective of if it's automated or not because you may be in a state where you have Certificate issued by Amazon, certificate issued by another, certificates issued by your own on-prem certificate authority. So in order to keep a trap on all three of those certificates, all three types of those certificate uh, authorities, you probably want to have a process which works across the board um, and a governance process around so you can uh, make sure only the right uh, certificates are currently in use and there's a central revocation list being managed by all of them and or that they refer to and uh, there is a audit report if you want to have a closer eye on what have all these what are these certificates which have been issued. It's probably one more reason why I love cloud because you can have a lot of alarms for these things and everything doesn't need to be manual. Everything's API driven. There would be two basic alarms I would set on CloudWatch. One for setting up an alarm when a request for a domain which I don't identify with my organization is requested. So for example in my ACM I request a certificate for www.domain.com but then my organization is www.example.com. I probably want to raise an alarm for that. Why am I creating SSL certificates for my account for an organization that I don't even know? Second alarm probably you would want to have is when production TLS certificates are del deleted or modified. You probably want to have some kind of alarm or notification sent out for that. Awesome. Now I have listed out all the security best practices for AWS ACMs. Um, if you don't have a certificate manager, I, this is just across the board, if you don't have a certificate manager, you don't really have to use ACMs, although the public certificates issued by ACMs are free, although there's no cost associated with the public certificates and they can attach to ELBs, API gateways and, and other AWS services that work, I would still recommend having some sort of a certificate authority, whether it's the ACMs or your internal CA authority, because it's it's always a good way to show uh, to your customers that you care about the trust that they entrust on you, um, the trust that they put on you. So um, HTTPS all the way. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do want, to, want me to do a demo of attaching ACMs to ELBs or generating requests uh, for certificates or revocation list, um, feel free to leave a comment and I would come back to the demo video. Until then, peace out.